Gorillaz, despite being the world's most successful virtual band, for the last 20 years have been making different type of music, going from hip hop, trip hop, electronic and alternative, you name it, Gorillaz have had a go at them. Most notably on their previous albums, The Now Now and Humours, have been reaching the alternative charts. By having continuous success, looking at this Reddit post I made, you can see a decrease in sales. In this video I'll be looking at every album of Gorillaz and the amount of sales and everything else. If you're interested, I have made a playlist for the videos I've made on each album of Gorillaz with more information and more detail, but I'll leave that in the description. Anyway, let's get started. The idea of Gorillaz came when artist Jamie Hewlett and musician Damon Albarn moved into a flat together after being introduced by guitarist Graham Coxon from Damon's band Blur for an interview done by Jamie Hewlett. Damon had made himself known in the UK as the Britpop frontman for Blur, and Jamie Hewlett had made himself known as the Tango creator. After watching too much TV in their flat, the idea for Gorillaz came. The Gorillaz story starts with music star wannabe Murdoch Nichols who had an idea to crash his car into a music shop and sell a bunch of keyboards to start a new band, after having no success with his previous bands he had made. In the process of this, one day when Murdoch crashed his car into Uncle Norm's organ emporium shop, he smashed through the window into young Stuart Pot, who was working there at the time, whose eye was pushed into his sockets. And Murdoch's sentence was to take care of him, but abused this. And one day, while messing around in a car park, Stuart smashed through the window and into a curb, knocking his other eye out, giving him the name 2D. Next in line in Murdoch's path was Russell Hobbs, who made his way into the group after a drive-by shooting which killed all of his friends, but giving him amazing hip-hop abilities, but leaving the side effect of glowing eyes. He was then sent to London for his own safety and started working at Big Rick Black's record shop in Soho. While Murdoch went to the shop and asked for a record, he slipped a bag over Russell's head and then brought him to Kong Studios, which was Gorilla's HQ at the time. Fortunately, Russell liked what Murdoch was working on and decided to join. Now all Gorillaz needed was a guitarist, although they did have one, Paula Cracker, who was 2D's girlfriend at the time, but after Russell found her and Murdoch in the Kong Studios toilets, they kicked her out. Gorillaz put up an advert in NME for a guitarist. A few moments later, a FedEx Cray arrived, and a 10-year-old Japanese girl busted out and started shredding a guitar solo, and bowed, saying one word, Noodle. The production for Gorilla's first album started in 1998, and the album was produced by Dan the Automator. As for musicians, most if not all the instruments were played by Damon, with the exception of Junior Dan adding some exceptional bass parts and acoustic drums being laid down by blur drummer Dave Roundtree, and some being done by Cass Brown. After the recording, Damon and Jamie would go to EMI to get a deal going for Gorilla's. After the album was finished, on March 5th, 2001, their first single was released, which was Clint Eastwood, and would reach number 4 on the UK singles charts and number 57 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming an automatic success. After, on March 26, 2001, Gorillaz's album was released. Gorillaz would reach number 3 in the UK and number 14 in the US, and would sell 7 million copies worldwide. Before the album was released, Gorillaz would start live shows. The live musicians consisted of Junior Dan on bass, Simon Katz on guitar, Mike Smith on keyboard, and Cass Brown on drums. Since this was Gorilla's first set of shows, it will be a challenge, until finally Damon and Jamie decide on having musicians behind a massive cinema screen, while having visuals projected. On June 26, 2001, Gorilla's second single came out, which was 92,000. It would reach number 6 on the UK singles charts, and number 34 on the Billboard Mainstream Top 40 charts. On October 22nd, Gorilla's third single was released, which was Rock the House, and would unfortunately only reach number 18 on the UK singles charts. On February 25th, 2002, Gorilla's last single came out, which was Tomorrow Comes Today, and unfortunately would only reach number 33 on the UK singles charts. The Gorilla's tour would go from March 22nd, 2001 to March 11th, 2002. Next came G-Size, which was a B-Side compilation album, which was released on March 11, 2002, and would reach number 84 on the Billboard Hot 200, and number 65 on the UK album charts. After this, a series of Gorillaz shorts known as g buys were released. After this, what Gorillaz fans know as now, Phase 1, was over. 
So what other ideas um, have you had for this? And is it is it a continuing project or is this the conclusion? Another album? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. David, yeah. how are you going to fit this in? I'm going to Africa and then um, uh, Mongolia, then coming back, finishing the Blur album. It's like you were rocking then when you started to say all that. You started rocking back because of all After Gorillaz, Damon and Jamie were planning on having a movie made, which would be released in 2003. But since Damon was busy with Blur, it was then up to Jamie to come up with the story. The film was meant to be called Celebrity Harvest, but eventually got scrapped after some time. In 2004, it was decided by Damon, Jamie and Gorillaz writer Cass Brown to make another Gorillaz album. Unlike on their first album where it was produced by Dan the Automator, Damon would get a new producer known as Danger Mouse. As for musicians, instead of Damon doing all the parts, he would get various artists in, such as Cass Brown on drums, Morgan Nichols on bass, Simon Tong on additional guitar, and Damon himself handling everything else such as vocals, keyboard and guitar. Unlike on the first album, the instrumentation was way better, starting off with Simon Tong's guitar parts. Although he only played on a few tracks consisting of Last Living Souls, Own Green World, Phil Gooding, El Mignon and All Alone, his electric parts had a great sound, especially on Phil Gooding. The drum parts were played on a drum machine and was played on nearly every track with the help of Cass Brown, James Dring and Danger Mouse. But there are acoustic drums on the track Demon Days, but most notably the best part is Morgan Nichols' bass lines. Unlike Simon Tong, Morgan plays bass on every single track. He added every song a nice catchy bass line. Most notably on Kiss With Guns, Every Planet Reaches Dead, November Has Come, most notably Feel Good Inc. Although it's simple, it's recognisable. For example, what Gorilla's autobiography says is the punk to Demon Days that it was to Gorilla's. White Light also has a prominent bass line. Comparing the two, Damon's bass line on punk just follows the guitar chords, what is called root notes, but on White Light, the guitar and bass are playing completely different things. After the recording, Demon Day's first single was released, which was Feel Good Inc., later becoming Gorilla's biggest hit, surpassing Clint Eastwood. It reached number 2 in the UK and number 14 in the US, and made the Billboard Year End Top Song Charts 2005-2006, and went two times platinum in the UK and platinum in Australia. On May 11, 2005, Demon Days was released in Japan, then internationally on the 23rd. Demon Days went to number one in the UK and number six on the Billboard Hot 200 and certified six times platinum in the UK and double platinum in the US and sold eight million copies worldwide. After, Gorillaz would do a Demon Detour full of performances from 2005 and 2002. After, Demon Days' second single came out, which was Dare and reached number one in the UK. After, Gorillaz would finally start doing live shows. Unlike the last live situation, the band was now more visible, while having performers in front of panels only showing silhouettes. And Damon invited everyone who played on the album, with the exception of Simon Jones accompanying Simon Tong on guitar. Gorillaz did the MTV Awards in 2005, on November 3rd with holograms, and then again in the Grammys in 2006, but failed when no one knew they had even started playing. Gorillaz performed five nights at the Manchester Opera House and five in the Apollo Theatre. After, Dirty Harry came out, which was Gorillaz's third single and was released on November 11, 2005 and would reach number six in the UK. Then Gorillaz's last singles were released, the double A side Kiss With Guns and El Mignana, reaching number 28 on the UK singles charts, not reaching as high as their previous singles. The Demon Day shows would go from November 2005 to April 2006. In 2007, D-Size was released, being the G-Size of Demon Days, reaching number 63 in the UK and number 166 in the US. And just like that, Phase 2 was over. After Demon Day's success, Damon would return to the studio in 2008 to make Gorilla's third album, known as Plastic Beach. With Gorilla's record label, EMI, going bankrupt, Gorilla's weren't given a good budget, especially for the Jamie side of things. As for musicians, Damon would get half the clash, consisting of Paul Simon on bass, Mick Jones on guitar, and returning from Demon Days was guitarist Simon Tong on additional guitar. On January 26, 2010, Plastic Beach's first single was released, which was Stylo, which was Gorilla's first single to not make it into the UK singles charts 
and missing the billboard charts, unlike on their previous albums where their first singles like Clint Eastwood and Feel Good Inc would reach. On March 3rd 2010, Plastic Beach was released. The album debuted at number 2 in the UK and the US and sold 1.4 million copies worldwide. On May 9th 2010, Gorilla's second single was released, which was Super Fast Jellyfish, but barely reached the charts, only making its way to number 28 on the UK dance charts. Just before it seemed like Plastic Beach was going to be a massive failure, On Melancholy Hill was released, which saved the album, but only made its way to number 78 on the UK singles charts. After all the singles were released, on October 3rd 2010, the Escape to Plastic Beach tour would start. Unlike on the Demon Day shows, the Plastic Beach tour now had all the musicians visible, and Damon invited everyone who played on the album, with the exception of Jeff Wooten on lead guitar, Jesse Hackett and Mike Smith on keyboard and Cass Brown on drums. On some shows, Jeff Wooten was replaced by Simon Tong. There was a total of 19 shows in North America, 11 in Europe and 1 in Asia, going from October 3rd to December 21st 2010. Plastic Beach was the point where Gorillaz would stop having a huge amount of sales. Plastic Beach was a commercial failure due to horrible picking of singles with the exception of On Melancholy Hill. I personally would have picked On Melancholy Hill as the lead single, then Empire Ant, followed up by Rhinestone Eyes. But just because it didn't do very well commercially doesn't mean it wasn't a good album. The Fool was made on an iPad during the Escape to Plastic Beach tour, specifically in America, making it Gorilla's fourth album. On December 25th, 2010, it was released to Gorilla's fan club members and then it was released officially on April 19, 2011. It had a double A side single, Revolving Doors and Armorillo. The Fool made its way to number one on the US top dance and electronic albums. Do You Thing was a single from Gorillaz released on February 23rd, 2012 and was made to promote their Converse shoes with the help of James Murphy and Andre 3000. Every dead body that is not During the hiatus between Do Your Thing and Humans, Gorillaz lost two longtime members, first being Nelson D. Freitas, who voiced 2D from 2001 to 2010. There is no exact reasoning for him leaving, so he was replaced by Kevin Bishop, but fans prefer Nelson. But a reason stated is that Nelson wasn't very good at improvisation that Kevin was. The second member who left was Cass Brown. He was the writer and drummer for Gorillaz going from 2001 to 2010. It was probably the most sad to hear about leaving. It's been said that him and Jamie Hewlett were planning on making a film called Shoot to Ill. But when it failed, Jamie didn't get back to Cass when they brought Gorillaz back up again. After a six year hiatus since Gorillaz had made a full album, fans were doubtful that Gorillaz would return since Damon had made his own solo album and reunited with his old bandmates from Blur and in 2015 made the record Magic Whip. In that same year, Damon would return to the studio and make what would become Humans, which brought on a new producer, Remy Kabaka Jr, who originally voiced Russell but in recent years has started producing for the band. But the album was mainly produced by Twilight Tone. As for musicians, unlike on other albums where Damon invites various musicians in, Damon would be doing most of the work, with the exception of Blur guitarist Graham Coxon. But just when it seemed hopeless, Gorillaz came back in 2017 with Saturn Files, which was released on March 23rd, 2017, reaching number 5 on the US Hot Rock and Alternative charts, and number 1 on the bubbling under Hot 100 singles. After came We Got The Power, which made its way to number 13 on the US Top Rock and Alternative charts and was released alongside Ascension and Andromeda, reaching the same chart position. After came Let Me Out, which made its way to number 7 on the US Top Hot Rock and Alternative charts. On April 19, 2017, Humans was released. Humans made its way to number 2 on the UK album charts and the US Billboard 200, and sold 650,000 copies worldwide. And it has been stated that the cover was inspired by their second album, Demon Days. After, the Humans tour would start on July 8th, 2017. Compared to seven years ago, the band had completely changed. The only members who had stayed the same were guitarist Jeff Wooten, drummer Gabriel Wallace, who had been accompanying Cass Brown in recent years, and keyboardist Jesse Hackett and Mike Smith, and of course, Damon Albarn. 
Humans was probably the Gorillaz' worst album to fans who had waited several years for it. People felt that it had way too many features, which was true because every song had a feature except a few. The Humans tour would stop, and the tour would take a break. During the Humans tour break, Damon would record the Now Now, which would become Gorillaz' sixth album, and would be a great return from the disappointment that was Humans. The Now Now was produced by James Ford, as for musicians, returning from Gorilla's first album was Junior Dan, accompanying some bass lines, and Damon and James Ford handled everything else. Gorilla's only had five weeks to finish their album, which explains why there's only 11 tracks compared to their previous albums having 15 or more. And when the tour continued, Damon told fans of a new album coming out. On May 31st, 2018, the Now Now's first single was released, which was Humility which contained a sound that was nothing like Gorillaz. Comparing Humility to Clint Eastwood, you can hear a massive difference. Humility made its way to number 7 on the US Top Rock and Alternative Charts, and number 85 on the US Billboard Hot 100, and was released alongside Lake Zurich. There was a total of 6 singles, but only 3 of them made its way to the charts. On June 21st, 2018, The Now Now's 5th single was released, which was Hollywood and made its way to number 26 on the US Top Rock and Alternative Song Charts. Then on June 29, 2018, the album was released. The album reached number 4 on the Billboard 200 and number 5 on the UK Albums Charts, and sold 330,000 copies, no longer in the million range. Then on September 14, 2018, the Now Now's last single was released, which was Trans, and made its way to number 16 on the US Top Rock and Alternative Charts. Gorillaz did a collaboration with G-Shock and made amazing watches which eventually got sold. After the Now Now success, Damon announced that there wouldn't be any more Gorillaz shows for 10 years. In October 2019, the production for Gorillaz's 7th album started. Unfortunately, as of the recording, there isn't that much information on the album, but what we do know for sure is that Damon is officially the only Gorillaz member behind the cartoons no longer having other musicians helping him. On the 30th of January 2020, Song Machine's first single was released, which was Momentary Bliss, and would reach number 3 on the US Hot Rock and Alternative Charts. It was then announced that the Gurus would start uploading episodes of their singles monthly. Their second single, Desolée, reached number 16 on the US Hot Rock and Alternative Charts, followed up with Aries, which unfortunately only reached below 30 on their New Zealand Hot Singles. After came How Far, which was a tribute to Tony Allen who had unfortunately passed away and was a great fan of Damon's, but sadly didn't reach the charts, neither did its next single, Friday 13th. Fast forward to their sixth single, Pac-Man, which reached number 30 on the New Zealand Hot Singles charts. The next single, Strange Times, also didn't make its way to the charts and neither did the singles that followed. On October 23rd, 2020, Song Machine was released made its way to number 2 on the UK OCC charts and number 12 on the US Billboard 200 and sold 200,000 copies worldwide. Song Machine was recorded during a difficult time meaning that when it came to Gorillaz doing live performances they would do a live stream which consisted of 3 shows. Although some of the Song Machine singles didn't reach as high as others, the album got pretty good reviews calling it Gorillaz's best album in a long time. There's no denying that Gorillaz dominated the 2000s with their multiple hits but in recent years have been reaching as high. Gorillaz were originally charting on the UK singles charts, but since humans have only been reaching the US top rock and alternative charts. It has been said that Gorillaz itself has gone as an illusion, especially after Plastic Beach, since Damon was no longer covering himself and eventually didn't bother hiding in recent years. Comparing 2005's Demon Days to 2020's Song Machine, it's no longer Gorillaz but music that Damon puts out with animations in the background. But for the last 20 years, Gorillaz music has been changing throughout every album. Their first album was Damon trying to figure out what Gorillaz was going to be. Demon Days was about different demons people have to face. Plastic Beach was about pollution and plastic in oceans. Humans was about Donald Trump winning the American president election. The Now and Owl was returning from the disappointment of humans, and Song Machine is about Damon trying something new. Gorillaz just as a concept is a genius. It will start out as a collaboration for the Blur frontman and Tang Girl creator, turn into a serious project for the both of them. But anyway, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like and comment and to subscribe, and I'll be back in another one.